Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Reeves, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hiya! Before we dive into today's exciting episode, I wanted to shine the spotlight on my business and how I help arty, crafty, creative business owners to build a sustainable business. One of the best ways to build a sustainable business is by introducing online courses into your business. And that is my specialist subject. You know, not only do I love textile art and embroidery, but I'm a trained and experienced tech trainer with well over 10 years of online business experience and mentoring experience too. And so perhaps I'm the perfect person to help you move forward with your business. I can help you learn how to create a course. I can help you learn how to improve an existing course or Zoom workshop. I can help you to market. I have a range of courses that covers all of those things. You can also hire me on a one-to-one basis as well. So probably the easiest way to find out more about me would be to pop over to Instagram. You can follow me, susan.l.weeks, or on my Facebook page, the missing training, where there's lots of information and free videos and a a really great free resource to help you get started as well. So why not pop over and say hi? I'm happy to help. And of course, I'm always cheering you on. And now let's dive into this week's episode. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Jenny Marie Tempest. Hello, Jenny Marie. Hi, Sue. Oh, it's, you know, it's, I'm going to tell the story in a minute, but it's so fabulous to be finally speaking to you. And um, yeah, I think today we've had every tech hiccup you could imagine, haven't we? So I'll I'll come we back to indeed. that. But, oh, crikey. <laughs> anyway, Jenny Marie is joining us from Australia. Um, so I've been I've been looking forward to speaking to Jenny Marie for ages and she's been on my little list. And so, so yeah, finally, finally we've got there. And what I'll do is I'll introduce Jenny Marie better and then I'm just going to share our stupid story and then we can get on. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so I've got a little bio here from Jenny Marie. Jenny Marie lives in a small coastal village on the Bass Coast in Victoria, Australia and has been working with textiles for over 30 years. She has a Diploma of Textile Arts from Box Hill Institute and has been teaching for many years. She's won multiple awards, sold work worldwide and has had articles published about her work. And as Jenny Marie says, I love the flexibility that comes with textiles. I can manipulate the fabric to form whatever shape comes to mind, which gives me the ability to construct beautiful botanical textile art sculptures that are very high in detail. And yes, they are. They are beautiful botanical textile art sculptures. Jenny Marie's just been finishing a mammoth project, so she'll be telling us about that, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, these things just look, they are beautiful sculptures of plants and flowers, and they are gorgeous, and they look real. So there we are. Right. Anyway, Jenny Marie, I'm just going to share our story. So uh, we're in a bit of a silly mood now, because everything that could have gone wrong today has gone wrong, including... Uh, we couldn't get Indeed. Zoom going. We had some technical problems with laptops. And then then we got started and I realized that I'd forgotten to hit record. So this is our second <laughs> attempt. <laughs> oh, dear me. Anyway, so I'm so pleased we finally got going. And yes, it's saying recording now. So yay, yay for me. Yes. Oh, dear. Right. Anyway, Jenny Marie, enough about all of that. Do you want to share with us what you're working on or what you've just finished? And yeah, what's what's got you excited? Well, I think one of the most exciting things that I've been working on was I've just finished my biggest piece that I've done to date, which was um, 180 centimetres, which is almost six foot yeah. tall. So it's actually a really, really big piece. So Crikey. I've just yeah just spent a solid four months working on oh, that. Four months. Um, 
Yeah, pretty much every day, doing sort of heaps on it every day. So the petals alone, and not including all the buds, there was like 1,500 petals that I had to actually stitch. So there was actually quite a lot involved. But I really loved every bit of it, I must say, and it was a very enjoyable sort of piece, um, yeah, that was something that I wanted to do probably for the last two years and been looking at it and thinking about it and decided how I was going to go about it. So I'm very pleased with the way it's come up. But so at the moment, I'm actually, I've moved on. I always move on very quickly. I usually have a project in my head ready to sort of go uh, once I finished, you know, the project that I've just done. I, I sort of seem to not be able to stop. I just keep going and going. <laughs> So we have spring here at the moment down in yeah. Australia. So our garden is beautiful. We have a, a beautiful native garden, which is only a couple of years old because we haven't lived in this property for that long and we built the house where we are. Ah, right. And um, I'm actually working on some banksias and I have a waratah out there that I've been eyeing off. So <laughs> I, that's probably going to be one of my next projects as well. And I'm just trying to nut out exactly how I'm going to do that. I've got a couple of ideas of how I'm going to put that one together. So yeah, 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 it's all fun. Fabulous. Mm. So everyone will be rushing to now go and look up what banksias and wabatiles look like. So. <laughs> yes. yes, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, no, 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 I no. think some of our plants look quite different to your beautiful yeah. roses and all that. We do yeah. have roses and all here, but um, yeah. where we are, we've got quite an Australian native garden, so Fabulous. it's all quite different. Yeah, and I, I look forward to looking at your, you know, the things you share because although I've been to Australia a lot, it's been in my summer and your winter. Therefore, I've missed, you know, I've never seen Australian spring flowers kind of anywhere. Right, so, yes, yeah, yes. so I really, I really like to see your, so although I've seen some of the plants, I haven't seen their flowers, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, yes, I've just yeah. really, I really just love your, your work. And, but the question in my mind, and I've got to ask it because I'm from Yorkshire, is, why? 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 Why did you want to make a six-foot flowering yucca out of textiles? Why? <laughs> I um. This is the second season. Actually, the the yucca is no longer flowering. It was flowering more in winter, actually. Yeah. And this was the second year that I sort of walked past. It's actually in one of our neighbours' gardens. Yeah. So I've sort of photographed it two years in a row. And yeah. Um, last year I wasn't quite ready to do it but this mm. year I sort of like oh I'm ready to do that I'm just yeah. itching to do that and I think it's just the challenge I, I really do enjoy to challenge myself and something it's it's not it wasn't particularly about having to do uh, it probably was a bit about doing something big because yeah. everything else the biggest was like only half a meter high right um, but I think just the challenge of putting it together yeah just like to sort of push myself a bit and sort of yeah make something that looks impossible to make and try and nut out and work out how I can make it in textiles oh, yeah <laughs> fabulous and I mean so a yucca you've got all the the spiky hard leaves and then they start to kind of fold in half don't they and kind of you know there's all the different shapes of the leaves and then the flower wow so how how, how did you make it construct it you know, what's what's holding it all together? I'm nosy, aren't I? <laughs> no, no, not at all. So it's got, it's actually garden stakes. The, the centre the center is actually garden stakes and they're right. sort of like, um, they're plastic coated yeah. um, pipes, metal pipes, basically the garden stakes. And I've wrapped them together um, and then I've wrapped them in fabric and then wrapped them in thread, which is sort of how I start off most of my stems. Like most of my stems are basically all wire, whether they're right. thick, thin, whether I, yeah. whether it's a single wire, whether it's like three or four different wires that I sort of, you know, take together. Yeah. Um, and then I wrap them in fabric, so like strips of fabric long strips of fabric I'll wrap them up and then I wrap the thread around them and then I sort of construct everything else around that and it, look the stems it just depends on how many components like how many um, branches are coming off like a single one's really yeah. quick and easy to make but the more branches the, yeah. the harder and the, the more you have to sort of wind around but I did once I did the center stem I made all the branches coming off it in separate components and I quite literally added all the flowers to all those single stems right. and then I added the stems in rows going down the actual the the, the big center stem ah right so you kind of made things and then 
assembled yes assembling was a yes. specific stage you weren't like doing it as you went you did all your flowers assembled the kind of sub branches and then put them all That's together it, yes. right right yes 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 so the flowers wow. were already on the the yeah your the yeah. sub branches as you sort of said yeah. before I put them onto the stems um and they were I mean mind you they were quite hard work putting them on I was sort of yeah. like you know it's tucked underneath there with these these um, flowers scratching me in my head and <laughs> trying to attach them, you know, holding it on with the top of my head and, you know, holding it on with one hand and, you know, trying to wind it around and everything. So, oh, but, um, crikey. I, yeah. I just, the image I got there was, I suppose, the similar most of us get to is decorating a Christmas tree. <laughs> it's quite yeah, high. And you've got it, that, yeah, that, ironically, it was a bit like yeah. that, yes. Yeah, you've got that weird lean, haven't you, that hurts the bottom of your back and it's not leaning over yeah. at the height. To, to Yeah, wow. That was an absolute challenge and it looks fabulous. It really, really does. Yeah, hats off yeah. to you, Jenny Marie. So so you've got some new, new projects on the go. Fantastic. Now you've... I think you've mentioned, or it might have been on the bit that we didn't record, so I'll say it again. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so what got you interested in creating the the 3D botanical structures that you've that you've been doing? For I mean, you haven't always done those, have you? You've you've evolved into those. Yeah, that's right. So, um, look, I I I took up sewing initially when I was like at um, school, high mm-hmm. school. Um, secondary school, whatever you, um, yeah. I started sewing. And then, of course, um, when I got married, I sort of started doing quilts and that sort of stuff. So I, I evolved from from the quilting. I sort of did a lot of machine quilting and that sort of thing. So and then got bored with that and did art quilts. And then I went back and did a diploma of textile arts and got more into the freestyle machine embroidery. And, of course, initially I did do a lot more wall art and I actually did a lot more portraits because I was actually a hairdresser for 30 years. So (laughs) looking at faces was quite a common thing for me. Wow! But, of course, when we moved to the coast um, and I would sort of walk, I have two little pugs, so Mm. I walk them on the beach each day and we're very blessed that we live quite literally around the corner from the beach and we look across to the water. Fabulous. And one day I was actually coming back from the beach and I was with one of my neighbours and I was chatting to her out the front and I was actually looking at this succulent and I kept looking at it and I'm sort of thinking, oh, you know, that would come up really interesting in um, textiles. I'm sure I could have a go at doing that. And I was really keen on doing some 3D work. Yeah. I had done sort of like moths and some toadstools and things like that in the past anyway, yeah, yeah. and I, I wanted to sort of do some more. And I had this beautiful um, tea tree wood that I had collected from down the beach, which was some dead, a couple of dead tea tree branches, yeah. and I wanted to cut them up and use them as bases. Right. And I thought, oh, that would be perfect. That would work really well. So I set about and I made my first piece. Um, which was this succulent, and it came up exactly how I pictured it in my head. So I was really pleased with it and got very excited, learned lots, made yeah. a few mistakes, had to go back and fix a few things on it later on. But from there it was like no stopping me. I just like, you know, okay, I want to make this plant and I want to make that plant. So I tend to um, I'll go for a walk. So either if it's from my garden or somebody else's garden, I'll quite often pick a sprig or something like that and I'll bring it home and I'll pull it apart and I'll sort of see how the flower actually is like you know how it's formed and how it's constructed and then I'll think about it for a while and think about um, what I'll actually use you know velvets and laces and and, you know what what the actual petals look like and you know so that I can sort of reproduce it into textiles so I I sort of really do still like my pieces to look like they're made from textiles but when people first glance at them, they tend to think that they're actually real until they get up close and then they can really see all the detail and, yeah, yes. what's involved with it. Yes, then that's that's very much the case. It does when you kind of look at it first, I think, oh, oh it's, a, it's a yucca or whatever, and then you realise actually yeah. it's been made out of fabric and it's really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but what a journey though. So I like the way you just threw in, oh, well, I was a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. Wow, that is a really yeah. interesting journey though, Jenny Marie. Wow. And yeah, and and what a move from 
as you say, kind of like art quilts and and you know moving through through that and and doing portraits. And now here you are making six foot yuccas. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think sometimes when you come from a quilting background in particular, yeah. you tend to have a high level of skills when it comes to sewing. Mm. So it's it's one of those yes. things that it just evolves. And it it was sort of it's it came naturally when I did look at the plants and I sort of thought, oh, I reckon I could do this and I could do that and I could put this together this way and wrap it that way and you know that sort of thing. So I think because I already had the skills there, yeah. it was just how I approached and constructed it and used those skills, yeah. So right. it's been yeah. fun. Yeah. And I think it's the same as as everything, like, you know, um, look, I think if you enjoy what you do, you yeah. can see it in your work. Like if you've got a passion for what you do and you really enjoy it. And it's something that I, I don't have to do. It's something that I just well, it is something I have to do because I'm just so passionate about doing it. I just, it's just my happy place. Happy place is in front of my sewing machine. <laughs> Fantastic. So, well, you've got two lovely happy places, haven't you? You've got your sewing machine and your beach. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's Fantastic. right. Exactly. You, yep. Oh, you are you blessed. Hit you the are nail blessed. on the head there. <laughs> blessed with happy places. Yeah. And um, yes, that's it. Yeah. So, I, I, I know how lovely that coastline is as well. So, I've, uh, I mean, I've travelled around Australia, I've been around there, and it's just really fantastic. So, yay. Right, well, that was a really good uh, a really good background intro there, Far, into how you kind of got started. So is there any um, – I mean, yes, you've, you've touched on your inspirations, really, in that, you know, you've moved from portraits and faces because you were hairdressing and, and moved over into the botanical because – if this, I suppose the structure, okay. and yeah, you have some fantastically yeah. architectural plants in Australia as well, so I could see why they would be inspiring. Yeah, yeah, our plants seem to be quite different to yours. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think one of the things we do, because of where we do live, we, we do have um, a lot more natives, um, and, and particularly even down on the coast, you know, there's there's quite a lot, you know, um, coastal banksias and yeah. Um, other different sort of wildflowers sort of growing on the beach. And I sort of really wanted to stick, I mean, I've done quite a few succulents. They seem to sort of go well with textiles. Yeah. yeah. But um, I sort of decided that I wouldn't really go down the the road of roses and those sort of plants, that I wanted to sort of stay unique to where I lived and be inspired about that so that's why I've really tried to stick to making things like the the banksias and the grevilleas and you know all those sort of yeah quite structural sort of pincushion plants and you know there's yeah lots of different and a lot of them and some of them are really I really do have to problem solve when I think about how I'm going to make them yeah I'm not surprised so and I I, yeah and I sort of been as I said I I really enjoy that side of it as well so Yeah. yeah No, that, that's really that's really really interesting, and I, I think as well that's probably why what you do stands out because it is very specific. And when we create yeah. things that are very specific, they are unique, and then we get known for that. And you're not lost in a crowd of lots of other people doing a similar kind of thing. So you know, even if somebody else thinks, "Oh, well, I do structural botanical things," but they do them from the things that grow in California or in Yorkshire or wherever then again they're going to be unique because we've got such a fantastic in the world array of fabulous plants haven't we so yeah I think that's really nice to to really home in on and specialize in you know that that thing and I just think it's for, to be able to do those for the things that you're walking past every day is you know is really lovely as well it just brings that again it's part of your story and, and, and yeah. that's always interesting for people. And I think the process of actually picking the plant, you yeah. know, being out in nature and actually I don't always pick the plant. I mean, it depends on, you know, there's abundance of them. Yes, I'll just I'll mm-hmm. take some home. But like sometimes, um, you know, depends on where they are, I'll just take lots and lots of photos, you yeah. know, and particularly yeah. when I've been to gardens and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and I'll just quite literally take photos I don't go and steal their plants (laughs) um 
But I, I do love working from a live plant and that's sort of part of the process too because it's it's fun to have the real thing there as well, you know, yeah, and yeah. going through that process is, yeah, lots of fun. So Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And right, so techniques. So you, you've obviously evolved techniques as you've come across a new plant um, mm-hmm. and you think, right, like the yucca, how, how on earth am I going to do this? So are there any particular techniques that you've evolved that are like your favorite or your go-to techniques or you think you're always like with stems maybe you always do them this way how how have your techniques evolved and you know where where did you get inspiration from or techniques or learn anything you know was there anywhere particularly where you picked up different techniques that you've combined to create these you know these lovely sculptures I think um as I said I sort of had the skills just from everything that I had done in the past it's previously. Evolved, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, I was sort of very strong in freestyle machine embroidery. That was sort of my, you know, I, I really quite literally like to draw on the sewing machine. Yeah, yeah. And um, I very rarely, it's pretty rare that I actually even put a normal sewing foot and put yeah. my feed dogs up on my sewing machine it's always sort of in with a darning foot on and the feed dogs are always down, down. yeah so and um and I mean I I can even sort of go as as much to sort of say that I have I have four little granddaughters who two are babies but I have an yeah. eight-year-old and when I started to teach her how to sew I taught her how to do freestyle first like you know quite literally drawing flowers yeah, and trees yeah, yeah. And then I sort of, one stage, I thought, well, I probably should take her back to the basics and actually make her do a little quilt, So, which she did when she was six, So, which is wonderful. Brilliant. And, um, but, yeah, I, um, so freestyle machine embroidery is definitely my favourite sort of technique. Yeah, and I, yeah. do, I do quite a bit on um, soluble web as well. So I'll do it in a hoop <clears throat> where I wash away the web and just yeah. end up with the stitch. Yeah. So... Sometimes I will stitch a lot of the so a lot of the um, stems and the leaves in particular uh, are quite often done very similar. It's usually more the flower component of my plants that differ quite yeah, a lot. Yes, so yes. The, the yeah how I do make them and put them together. So sometimes I'd be just stitching onto fabric. And um, and then I would cut them out. I I quite often will stiffen things as well. Mm-hmm. Or when I'm using a soluble web, um, even if I'm stitching petals or whatever, they may be rolled around and then hand stitched. Um, I generally don't wash out all the the sizal in them, and I keep them sort of stiff so that they sort of hold their shape. And my leaves. And that's the thing I will always, I will stitch them and then I actually stiffen them. And after I stiffen them, I actually cut them out and then that stops the the edges from fraying and then they hold their shape, uh, but they're actually still right. nice and thin. Yes. So yes. because if you just stitched onto um, two layers of just fabric with no nothing in in the middle of them, yeah, so yeah. to speak, which is what I, I basically do, mm. Um, they would just be floppy, of course, yes, once you cut yes. them out. And yeah. most cotton fabrics in particular and, and lots of other fabrics yeah. will sort of fray around the edges and the stiffening actually sort of stops that from happening. Right, yeah. Um, and bigger so leaves that's... and that sort of stuff I put wires in yeah. So yeah. Yeah, to right. hold their shape. Right. Oh, that's that's really interesting. And, yeah, I think it was Meredith. Me- yeah, when I was speaking with Meredith yeah. Woolnough, um, she – she, you know she was explaining about that same point you've just mentioned there about sometimes you don't want to always wash all of the stuff away because you can mm. use it to form you know to help it form a shape so yeah so it's 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 interesting using similar materials what different approaches people come up with and how how you can use the different materials in a slightly different way than what it was probably thought about to create a different effect so yeah I really like that and um, I'm just going to say this um yeah you mentioned your granddaughters did I see I think it was you had your granddaughter made a really lovely plant and and won something at school and I thought there, there's, a, there's a chip off the old block <laughs> yeah she did indeed yes that was um, lovely so, yeah she made a little daisy That's so it, she daisy, came over yeah. for the day and she and and look she I have to say I was so proud of her. She was like four hours solid and wow. like didn't have, like I gave her a drink and something to eat <laughs> before we started and she she quite literally went for four hours solid 
and I just talked her through everything. Now we're going to do this and we're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And, and I helped hold things a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Um, I stitched the outline of the leaves and then she did all the centre bits and she stitched it all by herself and she's quite confident with the sewing machine. Yeah, well, it's I'm just not surprised. amazing. I'm not surprised. Yeah. She's got you as a grandma. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, it's amazing how kids are like sponges yeah. it's amazing how they quickly pick things up so yeah. Yeah. and I, I think they're never too young to learn because I know a friend of mine she I remember her telling me that her grandmother taught her how to crochet crochet at uh, four years old yeah and I thought oh yeah. that's really young yeah. but um yeah I started her probably before six yeah but more yeah. so from sort of six onwards like from school primary school age yeah. sort of onwards and um, she loves it. Just as school sometimes gets a bit in the way with sewing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, how annoying school, isn't it? When yeah, we that's to do right. So. Sc- school and work yeah, are really annoying. She loves creating. Yeah. She does. Oh, that's yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to slip that in because it was just, I just thought it was so, so lovely. It was really, a really lovely post to see that. So, so what would you say then, Jenny Marie, in terms of a high point of you know what you've created your textile arts and embroidery journey so far um I sort of haven't had any real I I mean I've had lots of high points um I think you know even look you know this is even a high point now doing this this is wonderful (laughs) to have been asked and you know a couple of times I've also been asked to sort of you know have an article in a magazine or newspaper and that's always really wonderful too and look I think sometimes your high points can quite often be when you, you're somewhere and people you're with your work and you're talking to people about your work mm. and they really appreciate it and you know the, the way that they react to it and I think that's always a real high point yeah. I must say even just going back to my my darling little granddaughter just recently when we were making that particular daisy she turned to me and she said oh, I'm so lucky that I've got a grandma who's an artist and can teach me all these things. Oh. It's just so wonderful. And I actually thought it was just so sweet that she even considered that I was an artist. So I sort of <laughs> thought, you know, because I sort of do, I consider I am, but I don't know whether everybody else does. Oh, well. Yeah, so I just sort do. of thought that was that was just so honourable that she actually sort of, you know, saw that and she just, she thought that was a gift that I could actually teach her things and she thought that was great so that was a real high point something recently that happened so yeah 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 and it just goes to show that high points are what we consider high points to be and it's not always necessarily about oh I won this thing or did that thing or whatever you know it can be just the most personal delightful things will stick will stick with us Yeah. yeah I mean I have I've I've won a couple of awards which have been absolutely wonderful but yeah, I think sometimes more I get more of a, a joy from sharing my work with people, you know, yeah. and, and them enjoying it and, and, and you know, passing, you know, I'm always happy to sort of, you know, explain how I've done something to somebody as well, you know, like, you know, what I've done and that's how I put it together. So I'm quite happy to, sh- to share. <laughs> so ah, Fabulous. And just in terms of high points there, when, when we were chatting while we were trying to get stuff going this morning and you, and you said to me, oh, yeah, um, yeah, I've, I've listened to all of your episodes and, and most of them twice yes. because I, I, put, I, I, I put you on when I'm on the beach, you know. And so I was thinking, yeah. oh, do you know, for me, that's really nice that somebody the other side of the world yeah. listens to me waffling on about embroidery every day while you're walking up and down the beach. I just thought that was really lovely. So thank you. For that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. And I, I just so enjoy listening to other people's experiences and, you know, what they do and how they do things and all that sort of stuff. So it's, yeah, it's there's great. always there's yeah. always so much to learn from each other, isn't there? That's the, that's the nice. Absolutely. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's a you, you tend to find the textile community is always very generous yes, with that yes, side yes, of it. Like, you yes. know, there's always someone there who's, you know, willing to help and, you yeah. know, want to share and that sort of stuff. Because sometimes Sometimes husbands, they're wonderful, but they don't always <laughs> want to talk about textiles. <laughs> so sometimes you have to find your people to talk about textiles with. <laughs> so. That's really true. Yes, yes. They're just, yes. They're just not interested, you know. They, they pretend that they are, <laughs> that's but right. really they're, they're not other. Yeah, send them yeah, off into their shed exactly. or something. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Uh, so, Jenny Marie, you were saying about obviously, you know, there's been lockdowns and stuff in Australia more recently than what we had mm-hmm. in the UK. So, you know, perhaps you've had more time on your hands. But how how do you yes. manage your creative time? And, and just thinking back to you were saying about your yucca, you've been working at it for like what crikey, four months or something. So, what you know, how 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 do you keep that creative juice going when you're doing such a big project? And how, how do you manage your time? So I tend to generally in the morning, particularly Monday to Friday, I'll get up and get organised. And first thing I sort of take the dog for a walk. Um, Quite often I will actually go for a walk with a neighbour as well. So um, I've got a couple of neighbours who like to get a bit of exercise as well and don't have dogs, so they sort of join (laughs) along with me. Um, And then usually I'll come home and get them settled sort out of whatever I need to do for the morning like you know just briefly don't want to get too carried away with cleaning but (laughs) or or at all (laughs) that's right exactly (laughs) and then I um usually like late morning I get sort of stuck into it and sometimes look I I have I have times where I will um go for three four hours and then suddenly think oh I need to stop and you know have something to eat or something like that Um, it depends on whether I'm sitting in front of the sewing machine but it's not it's not unusual for me to probably do three or four hours every day so that's and but as much as I say that I can also you know I may have a day where I'm out for the day so I won't do any at all of course Um, which is not that often I'm a bit of a homebody but then there will be other days where I'll quite literally spend, you know, the full day, particularly if I'm getting towards the end of something and I'm putting it all together. You yeah. know, that's sort of like the fun part and, yeah. you know, you've seen it all evolving, so you'll just keep going Just with keep it. on going, so, don't you, because you're just dying to yeah. see, dying to finish it really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I know with the the yucca that I've just finished, it was a bit like – I it was like I just have to keep going with these leaves, like <laughs> petals. I have to keep going. I am with the leaves as well, but um, they, they were sort of the easy part compared to the petals. But I just like okay, I'll just do another batch. So, yeah. but when I was doing those petals, I tend to do like two or three hours of sewing, <laughs> and then I would sort of stop, and then I would sort of stiffen them and hang them out, and then I would sit in front of the TV and watch Netflix and cut them out while I was doing that. So, you know, and sometimes I'll even sit in front of the TV on the couch and wine stems and that sort of stuff. So I'm not yeah, always yeah. super glued in the actual studio. Yeah, I can sort yeah. of, you know, I can even sit outside. I mean, sometimes I'll even sit out in the sun and actually yeah. do something if it's just more hand stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. But um, yeah, I do lots. But I have, look, I um, retired from hairdressing because I had some issues with my neck and shoulders, still do a bit, yeah. um, of course. And I'm just lucky enough to be able to stay at home and create. Right. So, yeah, Fabulous. Which is really, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, I was just I was just wondering kind of if you had any other calls on your time um, or whether you're now lucky enough to um, spend your time just creating beautiful textile sculptures. So fantastic. Yeah. Moving on then to future plans. I know you said you've got a couple of plants in your head as to what's coming next, but, you know, have you got any other plans or projects and things that you'd like to share with us, Jenny Marie, as we wrap up our conversation today? I certainly do. So as I was saying before, we live in a little coastal village down by the beach. So we're in Bass Coast in Victoria and we have planning permission at the moment and we're about to sort of start building hopefully hopefully by the end of this year, but if not, it'll be starting in the beginning of the year, Yeah. Um, a barn. So we're building a Ooh. barn that will actually house a new studio, so a nice big studio and two self-contained accommodations. Oh, so lovely. we're hoping actually with our future ideas is to we will have like overnight accommodation of course yeah, and yeah. it looks out to the water and everybody wow. else can sort of enjoy what we get to enjoy yeah. but we're hoping to do some artist in residency programs as well where people can come and actually stay and share the studio space and hopefully even maybe use the space also for doing some teaching um I'll probably do some workshops myself you know from time to time yeah and that's sort of something really exciting to look forward to because I sort of I I do like interacting I'm I'm quite happy in my own world and doing my own thing but I also like to interact with other artists so yeah and I find as much as I don't want to copy somebody else's work I like to sort of stay to my own path yeah um but I find it always inspiring to have you know sort of 
um, artist friends around and that sort of thing. So that would be really fun to in- share the space that we have where we live and yeah. let them get inspiration from, you know, what we've got around us and the environment that we have around us. Um, but I'm sure it'll be a two-way thing and I'm sure I'll get as much out of it as they will hopefully. So, yeah, yeah. so that's all very exciting. So wow. that should sort of all evolve over, you know, the next year in, in particular and into the future. So yeah. wow. plus, of course, I, I have many plans to do many other plants. You know, I keep on looking in the garden. I need to do that. I need to do that. <laughs> and I need to do it in this colour way and, that, you know, that sort of thing. So, yes. Fabulous. Moving on to the next bigger and better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that really is exciting, though. You know, but put a new, new, bigger studio, and yeah, putting the oh, accommodation yes. in as well because you're in the perfect place to do that for people. Yeah, you know, like I absolutely. did traveling, traveling along that coast as well. I the the places I stayed at were all you know same kind of thing. People's accommodation, little studios, and some fantastic places. It, it really made the trip being able to stay it you know with with people in their you know place in their garden and all this kind of stuff just really amazing so yeah I'm sure everyone will be like really looking forward to that and I mean I, I forgot yeah. to ask you actually Jenny Marie um, do you do classes and and do you do any of that do you do any of that currently or would that be a new a new thing for you to offer since you would now have your your own lovely space to do it in yeah well so far um I've done more uh, a lot, yeah, have been teaching quite a bit, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, not over the last twelve months, and you know, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. little over the last eighteen months actually, yeah, because yeah. of you know the, <laughs> the dreaded C word. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, have sort of done and really enjoy teaching. So I hope to actually sort of do a lot more. So I haven't done a lot in the way of teaching the botanicals so I'm really excited about sort of being able to offer that and you know and sort of other you know embroidery classes and you know different techniques I tend to teach quite a lot of techniques sort of classes yeah um teach people how to actually do something so that they can apply it you know in in the manner that they want to actually teach so I quite enjoy doing that side of it too so yeah and at the moment I have like a little studio space I'm in the study and I've got sort of tubs of things out in in you know in the shed <laughs> yeah. so, so we where I had a the last house we were in I had a, a big purpose-built studio and it was wonderful and then we sort of um, when we moved to here we we were going to we had plans to build outside something yeah. outside so I don't have it yet so it'll be exciting to be able to spread myself out yeah <laughs> so. yeah that's it and once you start spreading yourself out that's it into you <laughs> you'll, you'll be that's building right, an extension exactly. before you know it <laughs> yeah that's it but I might have to be a bit more controlled if I end up sharing my space with, you know, um, you know, residents, artist residents yeah. coming in. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just absolutely fantastic. So keep us posted with um, what's going yeah. on there. And you know, I'm sure you'll be sharing all about it on Facebook and Instagram as well for us all. That's so, right. Yeah, which reminds exactly. me that, therefore, all of Jenny Marie, because I forgot to say this at the start, I've yeah. been, been very unorganised today, um, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, of course, all of Jenny Marie's links, um, will be on her episode on Stitchery Stories. But, yeah, she's busy on Facebook and Instagram and she's got her website as well. So we'll be all following along to see what the next plant and how the Banksias and things come out. So there we are. Mm-hmm. Jenny Marie, thank you so much. It's just been absolutely wonderful speaking to you. I'm glad we've got to the end of our conversation without yes. any more disasters. Yes. In fact, I shouldn't say that, should I, because I might doom us. <laughs> Uh, no thank you sue it's been wonderful thank you for the honor of asking me to be on uh, one of your guests thank you oh it's been an absolute pleasure right so there we are have a lovely week everybody and we'll um i'll catch you in the next episode bye bye jenny marie bye if you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more then please join the stitchery stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review? to encourage other people to listen to. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling 
and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.